Here with you is where I'd rather be Give you the best of me like it's supposed to be na, 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 na. And girl, I love it in your company Here with you is where I'd rather be Give you the best of me like it's supposed to be I know they won't make you go, won't make you stay Stay with that watching your pretty face Baby girl, I'm selfish with you And I'm selfish with you No, they won't make you go, won't make you stay Stay in bed or I'll tell you a pretty face Baby girl, I'll be selfish with you yeah. I know they won't make you go, won't make you stay Fall in love or take your pretty face Baby girl, I'm selfish with you And I'm selfish with you No, they won't make you go, won't make you stay Fall in love or take your pretty face Baby girl, I'll be selfish with you I'm a dream come true. We know we perfect too. But as you there with me, we are there for you. We go make them true. It be my dream come true. We know we perfect too. But as you there with me, where I did for you, we gon' make them do I know they won't make you go, won't make you stay Stay in bad watching your pretty face, baby girl I'll be selfish with you, and I'll be selfish with you No, they won't make you go, won't make you stay Fall in love watching your pretty face, baby girl I'll be selfish with you, yeah Oh, do he am me do, oh, do he am me do But I'm with you, I forget the world Baby, go oh, do it, don't you know I'm so made of a girl I see your smile and forget myself Oh, do it, baby, do you know Oh, do it, baby, do you know When I'm with you, I forget the world I miss you, oh, do it, baby, do you know I'm so made of a girl I see your smile and forget myself yeah. I know they won't make you go I'm oh, 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 pretty face Baby girl, I'm selfish with you I'm selfish with you No, they won't make you go I'm oh, 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 staying there I'm oh, 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 pretty face Baby girl, I'm yeah. selfish with you Hello and welcome to Kiki's Chat Show on ABN Radio UK. ABN UK is an Afropolitan radio station and it deals with all the issues that pertain to the African man, woman, child. Today with me, I have a guest. My guest is Marion Clark. She clerk. Is it clerk? Clerk. Clerk. <laughs> If you see my mouth saying clerk, clerk. I've got Marion Clark here, and she's an African woman. She's a wife, a mother. She's got a daughter. So she is concerned about things pertaining to an African woman, an African daughter, an African child, etc., etc. Now, today, the topic is a little bit something that we really don't want to talk to, but Africans are generally... Ooh, my mic is not in front of me. Oh, my God. Africans are generally constantly, or Africans feel, especially Africans in the diaspora, 
feel that they're continually being denigrated in a lot of things that is happening around the world. There's nothing ever positive to be said about Africa. Africans feel that um, if somebody has a charity or if somebody's doing something for the African, then um, they feel they have license to be abusive, to say rude things about us in exchange for a kindness that sometimes we haven't even asked for. And sometimes they're actually doing things that we don't see. We, we cannot identify, we can't quantify what they're doing. Somebody sent um, a message to me saying, look at Haiti, all this money that people collected, especially money from children, when the floods or whatever came into Haiti, they haven't even managed to build those houses for them. They haven't managed to do the things they promised to do. And, and Haiti is still in, you know, all this money that goes to these NGOs and to these people, how come Africa is still poor? So we're going to talk about that. But that's beside. La two weeks ago, Cherie Blair, whom I, you know, I, 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 I don't even know how to describe it, but Cherry Blair, wife of our ex-UK Prime Minister and a woman in her own esteem and power, she's a, a barrister, she set up a foundation for women and she uh, went and had a lecture for the African woman. Um, and in the lecture, she said that, this was on the 20th of March, she said that um, most African ladies' first sexual experience is rape. Now, I don't know what or how she got that information. If such an information does exist, um, is it still the is truth? And as you can see, I am pausing because I'm trying to pick my words very carefully regarding the situation. She said it though. What she said was most African ladies' first sexual experience is rape. And she said this at a lecture on the March 20th. Now, um, she's a founder of a charity that supports female entrepreneurs in developing countries. And she was giving a talk about women and leadership to a group of about 100 students, members of the community. And this was in a secondary school in London. Now, people were up in arms. People were very upset about what she said. And, you, you know, if you look left and you look right, you still cannot see how she could say this. What correlation has this got to do with her foundation? If you are doing something for Africa and you set up a charity for Africa, what's, what kind of statement is this? Anyway, I have Marion here. And Marion... What do you think about the statement? <clears throat> well, um, to be honest, it's quite upsetting that she said something like that. Okay. Um, it's generalizing things once again where Africans are concerned, African women. Um, she, you know, th she definitely has um this you know goes on we know that s situations like that do occur mm. but um it's something that goes on in the western world as well indeed it's not something that is just special for, yeah it's not something that um is an african thing because mm -hmm. once again it's being classified as an african thing 
once again, Africans are being put in a bad light. Mm -hmm. And usually when you make statements like this, especially with young people, and I do work in the educational sector, and I mm -hmm. know young people are hugely influenced by things people say. So again, um, Africans who are in schools will get teased. They'll be told all kinds of things. People have this impression that, you know, Africans are suffering. Women have um, no rights. So, you know, this is what happens for every African woman. The impression is this is what the situation is for every African woman or girl. And in that sense, it, you know, it puts the men in a bad light as well that you know africa is full of rapists um you know every young man's first sexual encounter is to rape a woman you know so to speak and every uh, young woman's first sexual encounter is also a rape situation and that's not the case you know rape is something that happens in the four corners of the world in the western world it happens you know um but when it when when it's something to do with Africa, it's always said in such a way that it looks like it's the way we live. That's how we are. Yeah, yeah, I agree with and you. And it's quite I think upsetting. It is very upsetting. A lot of people made a lot of comments about it. People were quite cross. People wondered where she got her information from. Now, I mean, as you know, a lot of people when when they are somebody like Sherry Blair, for example, she will have somebody checking, finding out information, writing her speech. She doesn't, I hope you know, on this occasion, she did not write it herself and that somebody else wrote it for her. And if that is the case, she has been misled. She did apologize though, but the issue is still there because she's already said it. Now I'm on radio now, you and I are having a chat we've got people listening out there. So if I say she apologized, they will hear, but that's not the whole swathe of Africa listening to this. Not so people don't know that she apologized. And I think it is an, an unfortunate statement to make. Now, this is why we feel that a lot of the time Africa is constantly being made into people. There are people, of course, I mean, in the Western world, we all, they, we have illiterates. And so the, all the illiterates think that we still live on trees. Definitely. One of the things that annoys me is when you meet someone and they say, Oh, um, Oh, are you, are you, are you an African? Do you know John Bligibat or, what? Yeah. Africa is not a country. Which is an ongoing battle I, <laughs> I face. Um, I'm constantly having to tell people, um, you know, what do you mean? Um, where, where in Africa? What, what are, you know, what are you talking about? West Africa? South Africa? North Africa? You know, don't generalize and say you're going to Africa. You're going where in Africa? Yeah. And there are countries, you know, you know even in West Africa, there are about so many exactly. countries, you know, exactly. they're in yeah. East Africa, there's so many, oh. is it Kenya, is they it haven't Somalia? Got a clue. It, it, it's getting... And of course, it's on do, it, you know, it, it's on doing or it undoes the work of all these, you know, hardworking Africans who are trying so hard. Um, I feel a statement like that just dismantles and just belittles all the hard work that's gone into trying to, you know, portray a good picture to give a good account yeah i, um, I was watching of... a program the other day and there was this nigerian man on and he was talking about the things that a few mm. nigerian people do and it's a constant thing i say on radio as well that if one Ghanaian man you go out naked and you misbehave or do something you have affected the whole country mm -hmm. if you you know why can't people do not realize that the responsibility and it's not because we're forcing everybody to toe the line or behave, but it's because the people already mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. a negative view yes, about us. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's sad, but it's the reality. Um, that's the situation. It's an, it's an ongoing battle, I think, mm -hmm. um, for us to try and give people the correct picture yeah um a lot of them will probably probably never get a chance to go to africa to see things for themselves no so statements like that is all they have to make judgments and this is to impressionable 
students exactly. in a secondary exactly. school. And you'll be surprised in, in secondary schools, you know, African students, a lot of them have battles trying to explain that, you know, this is not Africa's like, especially when you have a situation where, you know, a young person has just arrived into the country and has been put in school. Um, obviously, his accent is not the same as those who have been born and bred here mm -hmm. or who have been in school here for a very long time. But these are bright young, you know, um, students who have a lot of potential, but they are teased messlessly. Um, they're called names. And this is because of the impression they that have. they've been given they've been yes. given they're told all sorts of things you know and 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 statements like that obviously um gives these young impressionable young men mm -hmm. the, the 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 idea that oh well you know in that case we can do what we like to african girls wrong 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 so that statement um i'm afraid was not well thought through <laughs> Um, I'm, I sure agree. She's, I'm sure she's got regrets now um, because she's, you know, she's an intelligent woman. I hope with hindsight, she's saying to herself, I wish I hadn't said that because um, someone's let her down badly. It was an uncalled for statement. Um, exploit, it's about exploitation. So if she wanted to talk about exploitation, she could have, you know, explained it in a much, much better way. I, I don't think, single a particular group of people. Yeah, and 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 the fact that in this country people meet, you know, young girls go out with boys yes. who are taking them out. Mm -hmm. We discuss date rape all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Children are being taught to say no, and there there are adverts on the television saying exactly. just say no. Exactly. We, and exactly. so, how can it be that this situation? then becomes an African situation. I mean, I, I think she also said something to, that it was something also to do with gender inequality and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Well, it's something that is right on our doorstep here as well. You know, women have to battle for equal rights, equal pay. Equal pay. It, you know, it's happening. Young, impressionable um, young girls are having to do things they don't want to do just to get into, um, you know, um, jobs that they probably want to do. Um, it, it's an ongoing battle. So it's not to do with African women. It's an issue that uh, the world faces when it comes to women. Um, go to, you know, South America. You're, it's happening everywhere. everywhere. It's an ongoing battle. So if she wants to talk and um, empower young, impressionable girls, mm -hmm. Don't say things like that. It's not to do with just African girls, not at all. Rape is a very sensitive subject. Yes. And rape is something which if people don't want to understand it. Mm. You see, we cannot, we do not, and we always hide it under the carpet. And then we label a few groups of, oh, oh you know, um, African women are raped. Rape? is something it's a global it, thing. It, it's a, a global issue that it's a fight it, you know in countries it, people are trying people when they are raped most times the victim is the one who is yeah herself. has to explain herself the victim to is justify not, the you know, rape yes. she's looked at i i as i was doing research on rape the other day one thing that came to my mind was gray rape you know there's date rape there's there are different types mm -hmm. of rape mm -hmm. there's you know um i've got it somewhere but someone mentioned gray rape and do you know what gray rape no, is no never heard of it when you can't um you can't when it is not consensual, but it's in a gray area. <laughs> well, I'd like a, a bit more clarification <laughs> on that. I mean, it was like, a rape is a rape is a rape. <laughs> it's, it's, what? It's, a, it's, a, it's what, crystal what is clear, you what know. Gray rape? What's so, gray about it? No, it's no, yes, it's yes. Yeah. And and these are the issues. Whilst we haven't managed, even in the Western <laughs> world, to put a finger on it, to to have clear laws on what there was a woman as well who, in the west we're talking about the western world who said that 
people needed to um, have uh, uh, girls shouldn't wear tights or leggings because it will entice her sons and her friends. Hello. I mean, where's that from? Why are women continually be having to work against rape? What, and, and the perpetrator is normally a man. So why are the men not being taught? Women why always have to try and explain, um, you know, because you, you, you're more than likely to have to answer questions like, well, you know, um, did you... Um, did invited, you do anything? Did, yes. yes. Did, <laughs> did you, were you being provocative? Well, yes, that's the word. <laughs> did you um, entice him? Did you encourage him? Um, were you wearing decent clothes? Etc. Etc. So women have a battle. Women on constant. a daily basis. Yes. yes. You know, you have to justify everything that you do. So. It's not an African woman's thing. No. It's, it's you know, a gender issue. It's, it's a gender issue. Yeah. You know, <laughs> little girls, little children, toddlers are all having to battle this because there are monsters out there who would do despicable things to little girls. So right from when you're born, it's a battle you face. It's because we are not addressing... The rape issue properly and for a woman who has a foundation for women mm. and you know i applaud her for that but then i think she should have not, said something to empower yeah, women she's not thinking about it properly or she read it without thinking or she because she was and you see when i went to read about her foundation India is involved, Brazil mm -hmm. is involved, mm -hmm. all Afghanistan is involved, you know, so why Africa? Why exactly. is she talking about Africa? Exactly. In, in all those other countries, when a person is raped, especially third world countries, regardless of what continent it's on, the child, if they get pregnant, they can't go to school, their education no. is curtailed, yes, etc., yes, etc. Yes. Et so why Africa? Exactly. You see, exactly. And, and and maybe we should try and find or create a crusade or a foundation where Africa people should be careful what they say about Africa. It's like they give you something with one hand and yet they're strangling you. Definitely. With Definitely. the other hand, and that, that's uh, that's where the problem is. So we we need to do something about that. Anyway, before that, I'm going to play one music. I people, I'm getting used to this. <laughs> and when I do, after I've played the music, we will then. Um, I will tell you something because I want us to play a game, and it's a sugar game. I want people to. Um, go to the Change for Life website and try, and you know we're cutting down on sugar and we're trying to change our lifestyle, change our food, and there's so many ways of doing that. And 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 somebody will win a hamper, and I've said it last week, and so we'll have to keep doing it. But let me see whether this thing is going to play first of all. <laughs> Thank 
Yeah, I play music myself for the first time. Wow. <laughs> anyway, yes. Now, coming back to it, it w- I would like you all to go onto the Change for Life Sugar Swap website. All you do is you go on Change for Life or you download uh change for life on app on your phone or on your pc or on your ipad or something download it and then um do the sugar swap so what happens is you use your phone when you've downloaded it you use the scanner to scan things so you can go into sainsbury's wherever you are and scan to see the sugar content and then you can swap it for something better it tells you on the scanner so try and do that. And if you take a photo of your scanning and you put it on ABN um, dot ABN radio UK dot com on the website, or if you go on Facebook and you look for ABN UK, radio UK, it will show you. You can just put the photo on there. I'm, I found it difficult to do it, but I did it in the end. Or you can even put it on your Instagram page and then you um, you put it on your Instagram page and then you tag ABN Radio UK on Instagram. It's there. So you just download Change for Life app, take a screenshot of it, take a screenshot. I can show you my screenshot. Put it on social media and tag ABN Radio UK or Change for Life at Change for Life Instagram. And let's see who, you know, who does it because you will win a hamper and you can come to the studio as well during the day and you can meet somebody who is important. I'm here at night, so you may not see me, but um, yeah. Thank you, people. We shall continue with our discussion. Today, if you have just tuned in, we're talking about 
Sherry Blair making the unfortunate statement that an African woman's first sexual encounter is by rape. Now, that is not true. I'm an African. You're, I'm an African. Yes. We're Africans. We know a lot of Africans. It's not true. Now, we have a lot of problem with, or people have a lot of problem with the fact that when you say that, it means the African men are actually raping the young girls. But that can't be. Where are they raping? Is, has she got a country, a particular country, that she knows that this thing happens? Should we actually make a concerted effort to let foreigners know, people who are non-African know, that such un unfortunate statements are unacceptable gives the wrong impression it gives the wrong impression it then makes people think that this africa is just full of rapists it's and rapists wild, wild West. yes and that is not true no, at all no, not at all yeah not at all it's quite sad actually um because there are a lot of um impressive hard-working educated people working hard um to bring about positive um, images about Africa. So when somebody of such influence passes a comment like that, um, sadly, it, you know, it, it unravels all the hard work that's gone into giving the right um, impression. impression. Um, it's it's an issue of rape. For me, it, it's, it's an issue of rape and rape, um, is a global issue. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a battle women in the four corners of the globe are facing mm -hmm. from the day you're born till the day you die. Yeah. Um, until it's addressed properly mm -hmm. and the right measures are put in place. This is it. You go to Africa, it's there, you go to Europe, it's there, you go to Asia, it's there, South America, it's a global thing. <laughs> you know, you hear about some of the horror stories um happening right under our noses here. Yeah, here. Yeah, um, you go to Asia, it's there, mm -hmm. you know, it's happening. Do you remember the woman who was raped on the bus? Yes. By all those men and then they beat her and they actually practically killed her. Okay. You know, um, and, you, you know, there's rape everywhere. You, and this is an issue, it's an, an issue. uphill struggle it that is. we're all you know, men are grooming young girls. Yes. It's it's a it's a constant battle. Um, you know, parents all over are concerned, are worried when their kids leave the house, the young daughters in schools, they're worried because they're grooming gangs around. So it's it's a glow, it's a it's an issue that needs to be addressed properly. It's worldwide. Worldwide. You know, you can't just pick a group of people and say, oh well this is this is this is their story. No, that's not our story. I'm afraid that's not the case. Um and women will be up in arms. African women, and they in are, in fact, you know, even the because, men are yes, up in arms because obviously, um, it leads it shed, you know, it throws the wrong light on the men as well because it means, um, they're all walking about, um, you know, raping the women. This is why somebody was saying that a lot of white people, white women, look at black women as with through a savior's gaze, you know, it's like. Yeah, we're all women, we're all feminists, but, you know, the white woman is exceptional and she's the one who Sad. is helping Sad. you because you're suffering, you're, you're being raped and you're, you know, I mean, why are we in that situation? Why are we not getting out of it? It, 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 it it's, is it because they keep repeating it so that continually, generation by generation, these situations are constantly being, they are being reminded that women, are African women, oh, they're, they're yes. raped, they're sad, yes. they're miserable. They, we constantly they, have begging bones. Yes, we, they, they don't you know, amount to yes, anything. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and, well, the thing is, whenever they go to make, you know, that's not the general picture. But then mm -hmm. whenever they go to make documentaries or they want to highlight on a, you know, a trouble spot or a situation, mm -hmm. um, they go to the worst. They they, they pick the worst yeah. scenarios, the yeah. worst stories. Yeah. Um, 
they see, you know, they give the impression that they're trying to tag up people's um, heartstrings to be more generous and to, you know, stick their hands and to help um, and all that. But um, there's a motive. It's given us a bad name. It's given the wrong impression. They always pick the worst case scenario. They hardly ever, sh you know, uh, shed the light on all these, you know, strong African women who are doing wonderful things to promote gender equality and all of that. Um, they don't really put a lot of... Um, you know, um, exposure on that. Yeah. Um, it's always about, you know, um, a little girl somewhere who's been forced to marry an old man somewhere. Uh, you know, you go on YouTube and it's full of, you know, videos and stories like that. It's not the case at all. It's a global issue that needs to be addressed because every woman is important. Regardless of your color, your race, your creed, you know, every woman is a precious um, individual. From the day you're born, um, your rights have to be protected. So they need to come up with <laughs> a bit more than what they're doing now. But do you think that maybe because of her job and, you know, the sort of work that she does and the sort of people that she comes into contact with, for her, this is something that, do, do you think, I'm not making, a scale, well, we've got a caller. Oh, my God, I've got a caller. Mm. Hello, caller. Hi. Um. Your 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 program is not streaming live on Facebook. It's streaming on the ABN. It is on Facebook now. Oh, okay. Because um, I went on to see if we could see you, and um, you weren't. There. It's on screen. It's on Facebook now. Do you want to make a comment on on the issue? Um, I haven't heard um exactly where the conversation has gone to because obviously. Um, the conversation you... is Mrs. Blair says that most yeah, know... African women yeah. and I... you know have you got a view on that? Um, ooh, it's a very um, sweeping statement for her to make um, which is quite sad for her to say that because I suppose what the um, what it, what it seems as if she's saying is that we're quite primitive in our way, and that's not true. And I think she hasn't really had the uh, information um, with, um, with with any kind of truth behind it. And I think she was just probably making a sweeping statement. Um, and I'm sure it must have offended. It, it's a very offensive um, uh, statement to make to our culture as black people. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and it just mm -hmm. shows you and it just shows you um what white um uh, people think about us yeah for her to make such a do you, do you think that um rape is not prevalent in the western world uh i think rape is prevalent all over and i think as social media is bringing the world in a smaller um uh way before the world seemed very large and we just didn't know what was happening everywhere. But I think now with social media, everything is so um, compact now and close. Mm. And I certainly um, think that rape is something that goes on all over the world. I don't think you can just say Africa or, you know, um, any other country. Any particular area yeah, or I, continent. Yeah. And but. I just think it's it's kept as a big secret. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, obviously, as we um, expand our consciousness and as we develop as human beings, mm -hmm. um, maybe um, in our primal um, state of, of 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 developing, yeah, uh, she could make that um, statement um, because we never knew better. Um, but she can't make that sweeping statement now mm -hmm. in this 21st century 
um, that was uh, very wrong of her to actually do that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Gola. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, speak to you I soon. You, I can see you now on Facebook. Good. Thank Excellent. You. But you can go on ABN Radio UK on Facebook as well and watch us there if you're not if you can't see me on my Facebook. No, we can see it now. You've just come up. You've come okay. up now. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yep. Do you agree with what she said? Yeah, I suppose um, it's exactly what we've been talking about. Yes. It's, it's, you know, she can't make um, a sweeping statement like that because, you know, that's not the case at all. Um, she she probably um I don't know I don't know if I should say she meant well um it it, it, it wasn't a helpful statement um I don't know what the um topic was that she was meant to talk about mm -hmm. um I don't know if it was talking about um girls inequality mm -hmm. uh, exploitation or african women was it was she addressing the africans in the school you know i don't know what um the main um story was mm -hmm. but however yeah i think making a statement like that is offensive um because um it's a much bigger issue than just the african woman yeah um uh, somebody's just sent me um um a text and says that when she was challenged sherry blair cited a report from the world health organization organization dated 2002. i mean seriously <laughs> you know who gave her that uh, piece of um researched topic to come to you know someone's not done their homework well yeah and if she's guilty then she's guilty of being insensitive and not being diplomatic about it and not reporting the 2002 stats for other parts of the world why did she just pick because the statistics that i have on uh is it wikipedia it's all the countries all the countries are on there so why did she just pick africa um, i'm not sure I'm, I'm beginning to think maybe it was um you know when there's a hot spot trouble yeah. spot around the globe yeah usually um some of the statistics that are picked up are on are issues like rape and you know um young children dying women children that sort of thing and i think it's probably because she's just picked some information from something like that and has come to you know um put it out there yeah um i don't think you know proper research was done um and if it, it was a speech about empowering young women or young girls as well mm -hmm. you know then that was not something that they needed to hear well, I've got a few more Facebook messages. Let me just check. And it's also talking about the same thing. And people are very cross. Um, somebody's just... Because once again, we're being put down. We are being put down. I once mean, it's... again, we're being put down, you know. Um, and it's absolutely wrong. It's demeaning. It's disrespectful. Um, it doesn't show us in good light. It's just sad, really, because that's not the story at all. Are you speaking into the mic? Because somebody says your voice is not clear. I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> can can people hear her now? Say boo. Boo. <laughs> You have to say boo properly. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Um, my guest is a bit shy, and yet she's on, and she's got, she wants to talk, and yet she's shy. I'm, I'm not sure how we're doing this, but we are doing it. I Absolutely think by the time right. you come back next week, you you will be all, have more confident. Yes, you will have more confidence. Is this your first time on radio? Indeed, as you well, can tell. This is. I'm twiddling my thumbs. Oh, and getting you. all you're, nervous. You're not. You're not nervous. <laughs> There's rape in Afghanistan. And do you know there are some countries in, in, in not in Africa, but outside of Africa where, mm. you know, like Yemen and all these places where there are, not, there are no rape laws, you know. But even in Europe, 
even in Europe, and I think this is why people want to take Mrs. Blair up on her statement, is that people do commit rape, the perpetrator commits rape, and goes to prison for six months. What people don't realize is rape can be with you for the, re for the rest of, of your life. life. Raped once. And you, that's it. Your whole life is ruined. It, con it stays with you. It affects your life, your Definitely. schooling, yeah. your, you know, everything. It's not something you forget about. No. I think for the rest of your life, it's always at the back of your mind. It is. Um, and if, if you know, um, God forbid, some people are affected in... Um, ways that change their mental health forever yes they are not able to cope um because it's it's something that i think steals um something breaks your soul takes away something from you um that um you're probably never going to be able to, to get back get, yes. and and it's yours yes, your body it's, it's, is yours yes, exactly. you know and the way it's like yeah. stealing your yes, yes, your space yes, your yes, joy yes, your yes, life yes, yes definitely and and you know life goes you get married and sometimes people can't even be married people can't no people are scared uh, um, for life for life and yet they never come back the again. laws are not covering what the meaning of rape is. The laws don't understand. A boy in America raped somebody and then they, the, the judge said that it would affect his future if he's imprisoned and therefore they let him go. What about the um, victim's future? That's what is never put into... No. Um, thought what about the victim's um, future the victim has to live with that live through the nightmare constantly remember i mean yes you might have to go through therapy and you know whatever measures are put into place but you know it, it, it's something that you have to live with you you can't brush it under the carpet you can't erase it from memory it's there it's there and for some people that's it they're never able to form meaningful relationships again no ever no. no because of that you know evil act that was committed against them that is so true it, 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 it's a it's a sad state of affairs but like i said earlier on it's a constant battle for women women have to always be you know, um, careful, women always have to, you know, put in that extra effort. It Just, is a sad statement. Yeah, it is a, yeah. It's a very unfortunate statement. Yeah. And I think, I wonder if she's, you know what the, I'll, I'll tell you, I didn't want to even talk about it, but the school where she went and made this statement, mm. instead of the woman apologizing, the headmistress, she said, oh, she tried to justify yeah, it. Yeah, she was yes. trying to justify it. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, uh, it, it's great that um, this topic is is being discussed. It means it was worth it. How can you say how such were, a thing? How were the young women empowered here? I don't how know. How were they empowered? I do not know. And especially you if know, there are Africans in the they're group. They're going to walk around looking over their shoulder thinking, okay, so... Um, you know, people like to go on gap year, people like to travel, travel, people like to experience things, different cultures, you know. So, obviously, someone's going to go home and cross Africa off their list because they think, well, you know. You There's know, so I'm, much I'm, rape. Yes, I'm not going to go there. But if even if what's... they didn't want to go, their parents may not want them to go yes, because, exactly, you know. Exactly. You know, you've got to be so careful because one statement can ruin all the hard work of you know someone else it's it's a sad statement she made it's it's offensive it's disrespectful and she's actually destroyed someone's um what should i say someone's future probably um she, she has but you see my issue with this is when the same thing is happening worldwide. 
Why do people feel? Is it disrespect? Could it be that people disrespect us so much that they do not fear to <laughs> say well, things? we're disrespected. <laughs> we, we're disrespected. We In always have to mean. justify uh, everything that we do because um, years and years and years and years of, I don't know if abuse is the word to use, years and years of the wrong picture being put out there, mm -hmm. the wrong impression being put out there. Until now, um, you know, a, a somebody I once worked with um, said he remembers when he was a young lad, they raised money on Blue Peter mm -hmm. um, to take to Africa. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, <laughs> he said he was, when he became an adult, he was renting a house with an African man. Mm -hmm. And he said that this guy wore gold shoes, um, was always dressed fancifully. Um, he was always going out with the best girls. Um, and his country, um, the president of that country, um, was always um, driving flash cars and all that. And the money they raised went to that country and he realized that somebody had pocketed that money. So since then he realized, um, he said to himself that I'm never going to fundraise for Africa because it goes into someone's pocket. I live with this guy who's African and he obviously can't afford a lot of things, but he always brings, um, you know, he has a girl every night and he wears all these gold shoes, um, shoes and all these jewelry. Um, so, you know, he sees the African as being like that, whereas he has to, you know, he he's struggling, he's, he's struggling, working, he's worked out, yeah. he's even um, given of the little yes, that exactly. he makes to um, the yes. African. So here we are. And, and mm -hmm. he was always, you know, making funny jokes and all that. And I, I found that I always had to actually educate him and tell him that it's not like that. Um, I'm not saying that there isn't corruption. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that things aren't happening, mm -hmm. um, negative things aren't going on, of course. And it's something we um, from Africa are trying to speak against. Yes, especially and fight against. us in the diaspora. Um, so we don't need people making it worse for us. Yes, or, or taking us, we move four steps forward and then they take exactly. us seven steps exactly. back. Exactly, exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, you know, there are lots of um, women and men out there doing positive things. Yes. Raising the profile of Africa and yeah. working hard. Yes. But obviously it makes you wonder if there's 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 some agenda to or continually. Some, some fear um, of the African rising. The this African... Is, this is what you think, that there is a, 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 a deep fear of an African rising well, and therefore must, well, they need to constantly remind us to keep us down. Well, we've got be, to fight it it. it. it must be, but then, you know, we need to fight it. We need to rise up and we need to quell these things. We need to stand up and we need to let them understand that we're quite capable of doing great things we do do great things we do a lot we of do. things we are, do you know africans do. are doing really well constantly constantly you know there are a lot of africans out there sacrifice doing wonderful things Indeed. um and we need to raise the profile ourselves because yes. they're never going to do it for that us. is it you know this this is a proverb that says until the um uh, the lion starts telling his tale the hunter is always going to tell the tale for you and exactly. not tell you exactly. the correct story exactly. yeah um so we, we you know um i think it's up to us to try and um give a different <laughs> a picture different picture of what the western of, world yes. think of africa yeah, yeah. we and, I mean, and it's maybe, a shame that yeah. she said what she said because that's not and i believe she has come into contact with a lot of impressive hard-working educated um but do you african but do you think then that the people she's with are yes people and therefore she can say these rude things and they don't stop her somebody yeah. at the at the at the talk the lecture was quite shocked and upset and then sent an email to the foundation to say what 
you know what what was that what she said was bad and blah 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 and what does she mean by you know she's an african and she was never raped so you know and they said well you know statistics show and they had to actually make her come and say that you know it was a 2002 statistics 2002. that she was two you know what they not... she was reading well. that's that's unfortunate that's bad anyway we've nearly finished thank you i've got people if i haven't said it then or if you didn't hear it or if you caught us in the middle my guest today was marion clerk <laughs> that's right when i am saying clerk i have to purse my mouth <laughs> and say clerk marion clerk is an educationist she works uh, with children in a school she is a mother she has a daughter she's she calls herself a proud african as i am as well people right. as you know i do not hide it i am the african yes <laughs> the queen yes and you know she was so taken aback by this um statement that mrs blair made that she thought she would come and join me for us to talk about it this is her first time ever being on radio i'm very glad to have you thank you very much thank for coming. you for having me i've enjoyed myself it's a pleasure now people as you know i'm getting used to the board this is my third go i am going to play some music we shall come back give you our last words and then we shall go the show has ended we have managed to kind of thrash it as much as we can within the hour and the people who are interested in cutting down on sugar um you can go on the change for life website do not forget it's a fun game that you can do with the whole family can uh kiki is about to play something that she actually likes people get ready for it highly spiritual <laughs> Yeah, we're back and we want to say bye-bye to you people. I want to thank all my listeners who stayed with me, even those who couldn't get me properly on my Facebook page and then came back. Thank you. I want to thank Norma. She doesn't want me to mention her name, but I'm mentioning it. Thank you, Norma, for letting me know that the Facebook wasn't working. Thank you for all those who went to the ABN um, Facebook site to listen. I know some people are listening on TuneIn. Don't forget to try and do the Change for Life thing. Just go on the website, download it, take a photo or, or a screen saver of, you know, just take a screenshot and then put it on something on wherever it is but if you do that can you uh tag me or change for life or abn radio uk thank you so much for listening bye bye highly Man